Hi slugs, it's Esther. I miss you today, but make sure you check us out on Andrew Schultz's show, Flagrant 2. Me and Kalila had the best time over there. I'm going to be on the road March 18th. I'm coming to Indianapolis. Then I'm headed to Philadelphia, San Diego, Austin, Texas, Brooklyn, New York, Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and more. Get tickets at estheronice.com. I can't wait. Sluggies, I am on the road. I am out there. I'm hustling. I'm telling jokes. I'm slinging jokes for you guys. I'm so excited to meet you and perform for you. It's been such an honor. Um, you can see me. I'm going to be at the Berea Improv one night only on March 3rd. Please come out. I'm going to have surprise guests with me. It's going to be such a good time. I'll be in Richmond, Virginia, March 10th through 12th, Las Vegas. Nevada, March 18th through 19th, San Francisco, April 15th through 16th, Syracuse, New York, Florida, Burbank, Flappers, Austin, Texas, Tempe, Arizona, so many more dates. Please go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. I can't wait to meet you. I could be a plaid girl. I change. I have such a good Akash story. I'm so excited to tell. Oh, I wonder if you it. know what it is. I don't. Oh, it's so good, Akash. I, I've told it. I told it to like a random guy <laughs> yeah, at I'm a excited. club recently, where I was like, he brought you up, and I was like, I got an Akash story. He waited the whole meet and greet, and then okay. I was like, here it is. All right, I'm excited. Let's okay. Do it. Are we Let's recording and everything? Okay. Yeah. So you were working at the Village Lantern. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you had been like hustling, barking, barking for anyone that doesn't know. It's like when you go out, you you're like promoting the show pretty much. You're like on the street, like calling Asking, people begging say, people to come into a basement, a dark basement. It was a dark basement yeah. in the Lower East Side, right? Yeah, yeah, or is yeah, it, uh, yeah. Village. Village, yeah. Village. yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's like, it was it was a good spot and it was like an angle to get into comedy that I had not, I had gone through like the mics and stuff. You yeah, guys yeah. like were hustling and getting real shows and pretty much like bringing the audience in. Right. So I just come in. You've just been working there for however long. Yeah. I just roll in. Someone gave me a spot. Okay. I roll in all cocky. I have no clue how this works or anything. I don't know what I'm I'm hosting, say. okay? Yeah. And they're like, they're like, all right, you're gonna bring up next you're gonna bring up Akash Singh. And I go, Akash Singh, okay. Akash Singh, Akash Singh, Akash Singh. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna memorize this. Uh -huh. I got it. I got it. I get on stage. Someone heckles something, and it sends me into a story about Bukaki. Yeah. <laughs> and the word Bukaki and the word Akash held the same space in my brain, and it knocked Akash out. And so then this man who has been busting his ass to do this forever. Okay, you yeah. like probably brought the audience in that I was performing in yeah. front of. I go. I have to go. Okay. The next comedian coming to the stage is Mr. Singh, and you were like. <laughs> 20 probably. Yeah, no, no. I had I'm to call you. Seven, I'm old. I had to, but I mean, I was your age, so you yeah. were you were not that old. You right, were a right, child right. to be yeah. being called Mr. Singh. So I just, I think about that. <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even remember that. I'm so glad you don't because I would hate me if I were you. For those no, people. I'll tell you a story I remember that I resent you for. Uh, I, you do, you do my show a lot. I would let you do shows and I would never care how comedians did. I was like, yo, I'm process oriented for everybody but me. I was super hard on myself. And then you would go, and every time you'd come upstairs and be like, God damn, that was rough. And I was like, that's fine. Come back, whatever. And then I asked, I was like, yo, you got a hot show. Can I do it? And you were like, ah, I don't know. We're kind of booked up. And I was like, did this bitch just bomb on my show? So and what then time, she booked? What time was it? Also, my show did get 300 people in it, though. At a time? Yeah. At yeah. A time. No, sure. I paid and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a. Yeah. No, you I had was a the hot worst. show. I, I will not. say that I definitely did have. I was the always the worst comic on my own show. No, no, I'm <laughs> so not. It even... wasn't. An, it wasn't. It was. I was looking at you like you were my level. I was going, no, <laughs> you, know, you know, there's only room for one you level. You just bombed. That's what was killing I me. Know, I was I like, wanna... you just told me you bombed. And but I'm like, you, it's all right. Can you Wait, bomb, maybe bomb in front of that many people? I don't know. It's, <laughs> there's so few people in that basement. I, I, and for years, I was like, this bitch. <laughs> I can't so believe funny. this I would, bitch. Listen, I would have you on now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's go back to the 300 person. Can you get me Brooklyn. Andrew's contact? No, I'm, just, I'm talking. No, no, no. I honestly, I did have, I was like a Nazi about my booking and stuff. Yeah. I Again, apologize. it just bothered me because you had just bombed. No, I, Jeremiah, I did the same thing to him where I like talk shit on his show, not realizing it was his show. Like I was just like, <laughs> I think I like, it's, it's a testament to how truly I had bombed because yeah. you're kind of, you know, you're not like in your body. Right, right. Like oh, that. I'd be having those bombs. For and sure. then you're like, I'm just spewing shit yeah. out. That's so <laughs> I could have used a, 
Um, I could have used you on that lineup too. I'm thinking about it. Like you would have been. I, I know exactly where I would have put I wasn't. You. I'm not gonna front like I was some killer back then, but I was like, I know I get the job done. That yeah. much I know. I'm, I think I'm pretty good. You're at like I could do better than you did on my show. That yes, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But also, I had to like there were people that were actually really good too. Not that I'm saying you weren't. No, no, but you for that sure. were like per, like pro level that I couldn't have on because it was like the acoustics of the place and stuff too. But I <laughs> understand. I hear you. I'm glad understand. we got out of the way. You know, <laughs> tell old stories. Welcome, to Akash, just, to our show. You, I'm Kalilo. glad that was a great warm up. Have caused have to have called you Mr. Singh and I'm like, <laughs> sorry, we're full. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna go with Bukaki, maybe. Bukaki <laughs> is a fun word to say. I understand <laughs> that. I I would go on a rant too if I was you about Bukaki as a word. I was sweating. I just remember being like, oh my god, like just really like there's no way out. I had no option. I don't my name gets <laughs> fucked up so like no black host has ever gotten my name right. <laughs> what do they no call matter how, Dude, Akish, Akush, whatever. <laughs> Akish I got cute. called a mosh. I used to do all hood rooms. So for the longest time, this guy called me a mosh. And I would, <laughs> I would do great on his shows. And then when I finally corrected him, I started bombing nonstop. It was really unfortunate. You got to, you like became a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you correct people all the time? Or I, do you let things just go sometimes? I don't care how non-Indians pronounce my name. If okay. you're Indian and you mispronounce it, like if you say Akash, it's like, you know better. It's what Akash is, or- Akash. Or Akash. There's like a strong K with it. The yeah, accent. but it hangs on the A, right? So it's Akash. Well, some people say Akash. My my in-laws say Akash. So maybe that's like where they're from, mm -hmm. how it's said. But I honestly, I say Akash. I hear people say Akash. I don't mind. However anybody else says it, I don't care. Yeah. You don't dictate my identity. I yeah. Me. But when an Indian says like Akash with that soft, soft K, I'm like, you know better. Don't do that shit with me. <laughs> they wouldn't even book you on your I show, truly probably. don't. I think you said Akash when I walked in. I didn't notice. I truly don't notice. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, uh, but Kalila, I want to make Kalila. sure that right. Yeah. yeah, but but it's kind of like a westernized version of Khalila. So it's even a harder. Oh, I think we should start pronouncing it that. I Khalila. mean, it, yeah, because my, my father spoke like his family, even though they were French, they lived in Egypt. And so okay. he's a... Uh, he he spoke Arabic fluently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a play on Khalila. What does it mean? Your it's name? like divine friend or divine something, something. Fire. But yeah. But it's like Khalil, like Khalil Gibran. Yeah. It's just a girl oh, version of that. Oh, that's I, fire. <laughs> yeah. But imagine my whole, I don't correct people. Yeah. If Even if if I'm in Starbucks, somebody says my name, whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And I think that I'm doing it wrong. I think that I'm not honoring what my dad wanted well, me to be named. I'm torn on this because people pronounce my last name wrong and it's, I never care because unless someone, it, the worst is when someone brings you up and they're like, this is my best friend, my favorite comedian. Yes. And then they just butcher your name. It. What and do they like, say? Liederman? The Liederman or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've been called Amy. I mean, and I don't like, my ego doesn't get involved. I don't care. But then, but then I'm thinking about it. And there's Lara, Lara Bites is Laura. If you call her Laura, she will get really mad at you. And I remember being That's like, so white. chill bitch. But then I was like, <laughs> That's some white no, but shit, then right? I was like, no, where is it respect for yourself? <laughs> okay, are you, yeah, I but, think so. Are you like, can you say my fucking name right? I think I'm spineless. I think, no, I think it's only important how you say it. Because you dictate your identity. Yeah. You don't okay. let other people dictate. So if that's you say point. it how you want to say it, that's mm -hmm. all that matters. I say Akash, and that's all that matters. How do we care about spellings? Now, with Kalila, <laughs> when we became friends, you were K for so long. <laughs> but then I got it down. I got it down. Here's what I'll say about, I have a family in Germany, and every time they always say, it's Liedemann. Tell her it's Liedemann. I'm like, gonna I'm say not going to tell her. I thought they were going to gonna gonna say, her gonna say they spelled your name KKK. I was like, wow, that is I not I am. Cool. I mean, my initials are KK. I'm missing something. Now, oh, okay, wait. That's rough. Have you done your 23 and me and all that stuff? I am. Have you I have, yeah. No, that's no. That's you know. Not, what do I need you to know? do? You <laughs> know? Yeah, I know. What if there's a surprise? There's something white in there because I got green eyes for sure. But like, I'm not concerned about what kind of Look white I Look at those eyes. beautiful green eyes. Oh, I want to apologize to Akash Wives for I did have a moment where I gazed deeply into his eyes. <laughs> it's because he kind of called it out though. Okay, now wait, you you got married what, three years ago? No, I got married six months ago. Oh, we you got just engaged got before the pandemic. We we're supposed to get married October 2020. Pandemic fucked that obviously. So we moved it, then moved it again, then moved it back. Was that like hell? July That must have been the it worst. Rough. It was rough. Did know? you ever consider just like eloping? You can as Indians. You can, it's yeah. too much family. Mm -hmm. We tried to do it in India, but then India got Delta and that fucked everything up. So we ended up just doing it She's very good at like her gut is always right. And I was like, push to October. And then she said, nah, let's do it July. Did She's you right. go with a full big? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no Indian way this wedding. girl not doing yeah. full Indian. That's and so cool. I didn't want it just because the money and the planning and the stress, yeah. but it ends up being so worth it, dude. The wedding is the best. Traditionally, who's supposed to pay for it in Indian weddings? Traditionally, the bride's family, I think. 
Yeah. And that's part of, I guess, like, and there's dowry and all this other shit. But with us, it was like, our parents don't have a ton of money. So we right. just took care of it. Yeah. The last I'm time, the last time I was in New York was right before the pandemic. And it was for an Indian wedding. Yeah. But um, it was my friend, she's Vietnamese, married um, my other friend who's an Indian guy. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of family drama when oh, um, yeah. <laughs> from Indian mothers. Oh, West Side Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, your, <laughs> your friend hates your Indian friend's mom for sure. And vice versa. And mom hates her. Yeah. Like, well, well, first she's not Indian. That's a problem. Yeah. But it's pretty close. So the whole wedding, I was there for like a week and a half. I was just indifferent. Like I was in Vietnamese garb and That's then I was rough. in this. Yeah. I but it was like, so fun. It I was like, like a platinum wedding. I have a movie wedding. to pitch. I have a movie to pitch. <laughs> Do you guys remember Camp Nowhere? I think I've brought it up maybe 10 million times on this show because it was my favorite movie growing up. You're my it. same age. Okay. So it was, it's uh, Christopher Lloyd who was in Back to the Future, plays this creepy old oh, man. Oh, wait, who, my wife might like love this movie. I think she does. Yeah, no, she's <laughs> had me watch this before. I Christopher think Lloyd. she loves it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, so yeah. he's just like, nobody really addresses that he's this creepy man that's like around children somehow. Yeah. But he hooks up with these kids that all of their parents want them to go to these traditional camps. Yeah, I've seen Science this. camp, whatever. And then so he... It, he becomes like the fake camp counselor. So then all of the kids are in on it. So they'll have like a parents weekend where they all pretend they're at fat camp, which I don't know how they pulled that one off or yeah. pretend that they're, you know, at whatever camp. So we should do one for, for weddings, for traditionally religious weddings, where we pretend for each family that the wedding, you know, you throw like a fake one, like this is the but wedding. Still and pay, then don't though. invite those. That's oh, the yeah. thing. If I'm I guess pay, have I might as well have this shit. Yeah, I, I don't know how they. I don't know money your that, actually, the cost of your Indian slash Vietnamese wedding probably yeah. crazy. I paid six crazy. figures. I mean, her parents have my parents help her. They but let's be real, they cooked their own food, probably right. No, no, <laughs> no. Dude, it was crazy because I <laughs> too was. Many people. I too honestly many people. jumped from like a Catholic church. Have you been church. to one of her parties? <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We there do. was a flan the size of this room. Yeah, it was a big flan. <laughs> we don't fuck around with food. Okay. Yeah, Filipinos. That's like that's our only like Olympic sport that we get right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's food, food, food. And it's always like, are you hungry? No, no thanks. Okay, eat some more. Yeah. There's no saying no. It is so offensive to you turn down no. food. I don't give a fuck if you have to shove that, you know, last piece of chicken in the bathroom. I, I don't, just don't say no. Bobby don't must say have no. fit in really well with your family. Yeah, he's a fatty. We love a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> we love a fatty. Did you ever have to hide your food? Like, Yeah, I used to shove it. And when I was younger, you're feeding it to the dog. Wow. I remember one time, I think I must have been eight years old, where my mom was just like, What is that smell? And I remember just like shoving meat onto the sofa because I couldn't. I don't know if you know this, Akash, but I was like heavily abused as a as a child. I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to hold my own utensils mm -hmm. when I was until I was about 13 years old. I was spoon fed by my mother. I was like her racehorse. I did not know about that. That is the most that's yeah, the craziest of all the things I've heard. Yeah, so you she had a control issue till I was about 12 or 13. Mm. And um, I swam for the Philippine national team since I was like eight years old. So I was like just her racehorse. I wow. swam, I made money, and she spoon fed me. That's but fucked, she yeah. overfed me. So oftentimes I would take the food out of my mouth and I would shove it in corners because I felt like vomiting. And if I vomited, she would put another plate of food, say you have to... I, and she, I could not leave. I could not go to school anywhere until Did I ate all Did she shave your body for you too? Dude, I've been a shaved <laughs> child since I was like four years wow. old. Did you, were you ever on the swim team? No, this is how not Asian Filipinos are. Is that Your mom was like, no, you're going to make it in athletics. And every yeah. other Asian is like, be a doctor. What are you, you're not going to be anything else. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> no, I had to be both. Yeah, the, yeah. It was oh, like you you're gonna be a too. doctor and you're also gonna be an Olympic swimmer. Oh, and like I had business no owners too. Is that Asian culture to like own stuff? For I feel us, like, yeah, yeah. For us, open your own business. Don't like, matter if it does well. That's such a good <laughs> thing to teach your kids. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But I would have there would be rotten food all over the house, and I still remember the smell. And my mom would always wonder, "What is that fucking smell in this house?" <laughs> and I'm like, "You overfeeding your child and her hiding that food." Yeah, that's rough. I know. Does it make you want to have kids less because you yes. went through all that shit? That's, yeah. That's the rough part. Yeah. I'm I'm so trepidatious about whether or not I can parent correctly because I think that my sensors are all broken. 
No, Does that make sense? That. No, I can tell by your energy. You can be great. Yeah, you are maternal. You watch yeah. me kill my own kid. I'll blame both of you. <laughs> never, yo, never. I'm trying to impregnate my wife every day, bro. I, <laughs> I love kids, dude. I want I kids the most. Kids, They're the right? best. I think that I eggs. feel the same way. I love children. I love babies. I love Yeah, you're always them. surrounded by babies that like, are I like, am. mama to you. Yeah, and I love that feeling. I just, I'm so afraid of myself. We are talking about Esther, if anyone was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've seen what Esther's up to, but she's trying to suckle those teeth <laughs> every day. I don't know how much you know. About I have the been show. a mother, a lesbian mother to Esther for Yo, a while. Esther's hey, been trying to not, impregnate her. I, don't, I, I did not know that, her. but I don't blame her. You're maternal. That's a good thing. <laughs> My real, this is how fucking gay I am about kids. My wife said to me this weekend, I'm excited about having a baby. I swear to God, I teared up. I was Aww. like, oh, let's go. I, let's go. I, Wait, I have a question show. for you. Is, okay. <laughs> you can do my show, gosh. <laughs> is sex still just as, as fun as and exciting when you're actively trying for a baby? Well, we're not, we haven't started actively trying yet because we're like, she's got, she wants, she's in school and all that. Mm. And she wasn't that warm on the idea of having kids initially. She was like, yeah, I guess, you know, I want to have kids, but like, I'm not super excited about it. And we had planned to start trying probably within this year. Hmm. So we wanted to wait till after we were married, obviously, give it a year. You explore your career, do whatever. And she's younger than me. I'm 37. She's 28. So we got a little time. But hmm. now when she's like, when she's going to be like, yo, let's start trying. I don't know if it'll get old, but I feel like every day I'm going to be so fucking hyped. Like, <laughs> That's go, good. Your dude. kid's going to come out all positive, like oh, wanted dude, and like loved. loved. Um, do you think that's a big age gap between you and your wife? It was early on, but it, so we were each other's first. Like I, I was trying not to have sex till I got married. And then I remember when I was 30. Oh, that's what you call it, trying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. saw how you dressed. <laughs> <laughs> you also saw no, my No, you eyes. dressed cute. No, you dressed cute. <laughs> and I was on TV for a couple of years and I was like, this, you know, this is, I'm really not getting anything out of this. What was your first, was it guy code was the first thing? No, Wild and Out was the first Wild thing. Wild and Out, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You did do guy code eventually though, right? Yeah, and like, it was all the, or the guy yeah, from it was a bunch of 16 year olds telling me I was cute. And I was like, this is weird. Wasn't it uh, weird? It wasn't really such weird. a weird, because we weren't that old, but we were like. Dude, I was some, some girl sent me her screenshot of her wallpaper and it was me. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but I remember when I hit 30, I was like, look, I'm not married. So I'm not waiting till I'm married, but it's got to be somebody that I feel like is special. And then when I met my wife pretty quickly, we were like, nah, this is, even though she was 22, I was 31. It was like, I was so immature in relationships. It kind of. <laughs> um, you're the exact age my parents were when they, they actually got married when my mom was 22 and my dad was 31. Really? No, we couldn't have got married then. Neither one of us was ready. But we st we made it through all the shit. We I think Bobby's way too young for me. He has not hit like a maturity. <laughs> Her that... dad would be 100. Oh, now. let me, you, that's not a bad age gap, you and your wife. My dad was 36 years older than my Jeez mom. Jeez up, dog. That <laughs> motherfucker got game. <laughs> I respect this guy. How, wait, how old was she? She wasn't a weird age, was she? She was a, a weirdish age, uh, 21. Oh, he was 57. And she must have been yeah, so he's hot. A, he was an um, expat, but my dad, he wasn't a sloppy 50 something year old. Like he was a successful, he was a fine -ass rich. He was like, yeah, you know, yeah, very yeah. lived a very affluent life, comes from old money. Um, and he looked good. He, he looked like that. Richard he, Gere. Yeah, he earned a 21 year old. Are you, yeah. <laughs> um, are you in touch with his side of the family at all? The old money people? Um, they're very snooty, very wealthy white artists from Switzerland. Wow. And they all live there. Um, we kind of email here and there, but like the extent of that relationship is really kind of cocky on their end. It's like, oh yeah, go visit my gallery in LA at this gallery. And I'm like, no man, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. do. We're this first, so we're first cousins. <laughs> yeah, like I want to have a meal. Did you watch our show? We talk about jizz. Ooh. Um, listen, guys, <laughs> things get rough, <laughs> and I, admittedly, have a lot of issues that I've dealt with since I was very young. I have, um, very long bouts of depression. I have extreme anxiety, which is why. Of all the things in my life that I find completely indispensable, it is therapy. Mm -hmm. Without therapy, I don't think I would be alive to see this day. Wow, this is a dark one. But guys, <laughs> it's true. These subjects, listen, we're podcasters. Our lives couldn't really get better. And we still need better help. Do you know what I mean? There's no shame in needing therapy. And, you know, all of the excuses that you used to have, you don't want to drive. You don't want to find parking. You don't want to find... It's hard to find the right doctor. You don't want to wait in the waiting room. All of those things are taken care of now with better help. And also it's like, even if you are the most balanced, even keeled person on the planet, daily life stressors are eventually gonna add up and get to you, which is 
all the more reason to have something to sound yep. off to a therapist. Just have fun. Sometimes you're just bored. You want to chat with someone <laughs> whose job it is to listen to you. <laughs> the great thing about BetterHelp, too, is that you can start communicating with a therapist in in um, just under 48 hours. And yeah, it's, and you can but, try out a bunch of different ones, too. It's, you know, there's, that's the key. I yeah. love that. It's like sometimes it's not a match. And the fact that you can just without any guilt be like, you know what? This didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go see another therapist. That's also an option. Another option, you can journal. Yeah. If you, if, if, you know, there's still five days before your next therapy appointment and you have big feelings, write them down. There's a journal feature. It's yeah. great. Save your loved ones and get better help. <laughs> <laughs> We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash trash Tuesday. Check out betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. Here's what would excite me if I walked into a man's room, if I saw that he had Manscaped products. Yeah. Because then I know he his balls are deodorized. Yeah. His bush is trimmed. Yep. And he's generally taking better care of himself. And you don't have to wait till you go into the bathroom and see the hair stuck to the toilet seat. <laughs> you know right away he's his lower area is cleaner than even his toilet. And the likelihood of him having nicks on his balls or shaft, very low. Yes. Listen, this is manscaped. They're not messing around. And they're they're not just having the trimming of the pubes now. They have body washes. Now, Todd and I shower together because we like to connect. They're real lovers. We shower together and we, you know, we squish up, we we lather up and we squish on each other. And it's really <laughs> nice. Manscaped is we're pretty much having a threesome with Manscaped is what I'm saying. And their body wash is infused with aloe vera and sea salt shower gel. Sounds like a man. He smells like a man. He smells like a man. He smells like a man. They also have a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's a nourishing and luxurious two-in-one, far above the rest, infused also with sea kelp and coconut water. Sounds like Kalila to me. And not to mention, this is all on top of their already amazing lawnmower 4.0. You guys, if you're not, um, we don't mind hair. We don't mind hair. Yeah. Just, you know, occasionally show us that you care. Trim? Okay, use Manscaped to trim this hair and then use Manscaped shampoo to get this hair smelling good. All right? Wash your armpit hair with their body wash. They're covering all your hairs, okay? Your hairs are taken care of. Get 20% off plus free shipping with a code TRASH at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with a code TRASH at manscaped.com. The only smell you'll want on him in a bottle, thanks to Manscaped. Old money doesn't care about new money. They the don't. Thing. They don't care. That's it's why so, why it, impress old money? Because it's their identity is that they they just have things. Yeah. Like yeah. think about like how I've gone, like since I started making money, I mean, I am like, I'm buying glasses, I'm losing them, I'm buying them again. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fire. like, spe I'm a spender. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm starting to feel like I deserve it. If I was born feeling like that was just my life, it would be, I would never talk to you. <laughs> like get away from me, peasant. No, they probably look at that like, uh, ugh. like, cause I remember uh, as a comic, Julio Gallarotti is like friends with these super rich people, and I just went over to their house once for like he, he is always, stopping for he some. is. I was in his house in like this crazy apartment in New York City, and I remember the the guy that was his friend had in New York City his own massive bedroom, bigger than any bedroom I've seen, with a walk in closet in a bedroom and like a six bedroom apartment, and then like fifteen different cologne bottles, and I was like, oh, money doesn't mean anything to this guy, it truly. It has no meaning. It's just a thing. I whatever. Buy whatever I want, you want something. I just get it. Yeah. So they probably look at people who think that shit is cool. Like, oh, come on. You just yeah, buy like, it. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. That's how my dad lived for a long time until he lost it all. But even when he lost it all, he would not pay for onions or garlic because he think he his idea was he was above paying for bulbs. Like he would go to the grocery store <laughs> and just grab things and just walk out. It was dark in that the house. That is fire, honestly. And I'm like, you're poor no, now, also, motherfucker. No, also fire is what they had to use to light the room because you can't <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's that hilarious. Like, doesn't like things like from the dirt. <laughs> nah, that's hilarious. I love that kind of shit though. Dude, white dudes don't get enough credit for that kind of shit. I know, it's like, they just don't pay for bulbs. That's I guess. fire, dude. We talk about white male privilege. Nah, fuck that. That motherfucker And where did they come that. from? You just didn't have spite? You'd had no like flavor to your food? Well, no, He's I'm white. saying like, yeah, he. Oh, he would go pick it or what? No, he would steal it from the grocery yeah. store. Uh, up, can dude. I tell you the 
people that I know who shoplift are usually the richest people. Yes. Because they're, they're shoplifting for other reasons. Like your dad, like it was like, for a thrill. How dare. It's, a rush, it's, yeah. it's just privilege. Yeah. Dude. How dare I you tell friend, me I need to pay for this garlic from uh, Gilroy? You gotta respect that on some level, right? Yeah. And I, yeah. When he first moved to the Philippines, he lived in a hotel for two years. And when we, our family car was a taxi cab, he bought a taxi cab. Oh. What, just, so he could look like he was being driven? Yes. Ah, uh, dude. <laughs> he was an asshole. Yeah, that's sad. That's, that's sad. That's cool. But I was the, like, but the stealing is cool as fuck. No, okay. So cool. Do you have a car? You don't have a car. No, no, no we do have a car. Yeah, where yeah, do you put 2011 it? 2011 Honda Accord. Where does it go? It's in a garage mm. in New York. Do you use it? Yeah, my wife goes to Philly a lot. She's from Philly. Oh, really? So where in Philly she, is she from? She is. Her family lived. I forget where. She moved to the suburbs when she was younger. But she's from what maybe suburb? northeast or I something. Know? Okay. Uh, Bucks Bucks County. Okay. I'm from Montgomery County. Okay. I was okay. like, oh my God. Oh, wait, she's young. Maybe yes. I babysat her. <laughs> <laughs> Most of those those kids didn't make it, unfortunately. No, nah, Indians don't do babysitters. We have family. Yeah. We have moms. Yeah. Oh, Filipinos um, don't love either. That. Yeah, but she didn't want to come to the city and I wanted to be in the city. So I was like, look, I'll try to make it as easy for you to get out of the city as we can. So we're like by the West Side Highway so she can go to uh, Jersey quickly. Yeah. We got a car. So, I mean, Philly quickly. So, yeah, we just. Honda Civics I, are evergreen. They'll never go out of style. I'm about to it's, get rid of mine. It's no, an Accord, don't. but it's. No, I I'm getting. Listen. Death. I love the hatchbacks from like, was it like the early. That was my first car. It was a 2000. No, 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 no. 2000. 1993 Honda Civic. Well, SI. you were a hot boy 1993 then. You were a cool the, guy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I was, I was, I was supposed to be, but I didn't like soup it up or whatever. Mm. You got a Honda. I was Toyota. I was Camry. I had a 1993 Camry for you. My dad was Honda, so we were Honda. But Toyota Fire too. I'll get a Toyota. We had They're Toyota. Even the same thing. My rental car now is a Toyota Sienna. Toyota Sienna van. I was like, I want a minivan. Minivans I like are that. so You really good. want a kid. I really Thank want a kid. Thank you for My saying that. My wife refuses to get a minivan. It's driving me Did fucking you, nuts. Do you like tuck in like a baseball or like a, a couple soccer balls into a no, baby I might, thing No, I might put a watermelon in a baby seat. Yeah. I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Visualization type shit. Um, I think that you're right. Toyota Siennas are underrated and I think more single people should have them. Are Siennas, oh, Siennas are the, the, the vans. Minivan. Yeah, the vans. They the, are, they, they're smooth drive, so comfortable. Minivans are pretty good. The greatest car on earth is a minivan. I think so. It's a it's a Bentley for a family. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. You know what I mean, like, what are you an SUV, dude? I got friends that have kids and like, I'm not getting a minivan. I have an SUV. Their life sucks. Mm -hmm. The kids are always uncomfortable. If you gotta sit, you gotta squeeze in between them like a fucking idiot. It's terrible. Get you, a minivan. Wait, did you guys ever have a minivan when you were little? That was like the one. Do you remember when they used to have the ones? I don't know if they were the minivans, but it was some hatchbacks. But you would face towards the back. Yes. Do you yes. remember how fucking fun that was Bring to that like back, sit dog. in the back? Hell I yeah. think it it ended up being. Like probably beheading a couple children. Uh, Something happened where it no longer happens at all ever. It would swivel. The chair would swivel, mm. and you don't even. It I don't have to look so at my kid. They don't have to look at me. They're just fucking around in the or back. Be like fired. Honk. You'd have like a signs honk if you're. What I had to get used to was pickups not being used as pickups in America. Like mm. when I first came here, I'm like, why aren't there eight people in the back? Why aren't there all the people in wheelchairs being driven around? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was always insistent on sitting in the back, and then they started to realize how easily you could die. And they just you just get launched off. And then yeah. I realized, I was like, oh, people drive 100 miles an hour It's not so yeah. fun, yeah. It's too much. Yeah. It's not enough traffic. You go as fast as you want to. Now, are Probably convertibles can, still a thing? Is that still like Todd a- Todd will be like, I want a convertible. I'm like, I feel like that's for girls. I don't know. I Remember when we got a convertible in Hawaii? Yeah, and like my lashes fell off. Oh my like God, you were so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, okay, so we went to Hawaii, and there yes. was like two nice days. My boyfriend came with us. Mm -hmm. And he rented this like convertible uh, Range Land Rover. Rover. Range Rover. Yeah. And um, Kalila was in the back. It was starting to turn. The weather was, it was like the last moment yeah. where it was like starting to trickle. Kalila was like in the back. Like, oh. Well, <laughs> it's never fun in the back of a convertible. It yeah. only works for the people in the front seat. And then the guy that was, the was, was trying wind. to talk to you and he's like screaming. He's like, I just want to let you know, Tiger Belly meant a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to have this one moment where I want to tell you you really got me through the pandemic. She's like, her no. eyelashes up here. Her eyelashes stuck to my forehead. <laughs> oh, fuck. I was like, Todd, do not put the stop up. Don't you fucking dare. Yeah. Sort of drizzle a little. Oh, God. Oh. You're good. It's sparkling. You're good. Oh, my God. It was scary. It's, it's Thank close. you. Good. You're going to be a good dad. Yeah, I'm okay. telling you. The dude, shame of dropping that was immediately taken from me. Thank um, you. It's all good, dude. You know what I mean? Who gives um, a fuck? Yeah. 
God, Annie, thank you I for I don't respect a man in a convertible. A man who drives a convertible, I don't respect you. And I don't boyfriend. know why. It's just soft. I would love your, for your you. Your boyfriend owns a convertible? No, no, he, he wants to. And I'm down for you I'll, to not. I'm down for you to I'm gonna get you guys, have whatever feelings uh, you have about him. <laughs> I'm going to get you guys a Honda Odyssey. You can be living your best life. He would actually love that, I think. An Odyssey is a great car. Here's what I was thinking. This is why I was asking about cars. So at the comedy store, the big, big time comics will come in and like, uh, they'll be driven in in giant like Suburbans or like these giant big black mm. SUVs. And I always go like, who's here? And then sometimes it'll be someone where I'm like, that person? <laughs> and then I'm like, but they live here. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And they'll be like, oh, I think they're trying to like not get COVID. And I'm like, what? Yeah. But I like the Comedy Star parking lot flex. Yeah, that is a flex. It's really, really good. I almost want to tell you a thing I'm planning, but I it wait. Will what's ruin the it. flex with the type of car they you, drive okay, in? Okay, yes, too? you drive in and having a car the spot is a flex. Period. Like pulling in, yeah. already kind of a flex. But you can see some some people that get past early on. They come chugging in, and some mm -hmm. things are getting dragged. I mean, see, Esther <laughs> just had her upgraded her car finally. There was I just started the, here, so I didn't. Now I have. You been did. Back. You yeah, did. I started that for like a year and a oh, half. Oh, were here. you a teen comic? No, no, I was 22. Oh, was that's because right of Wild and Out. No, Wild and Out when I was like 28, 29. Whatever. Oh. But it was like 22, I moved right out of college here because I was like, oh, comedy, LA, mm -hmm. show business. I didn't know. So I started here, but anytime anybody pulled up, you're like, yeah, that guy's passed and I'm parking in fucking eight blocks away. <laughs> so this guy's doing it to me. Well, do but you want to hate me more? Yeah. Okay, so I got past first audition. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was, didn't yeah. know what it was, had yeah. no clue. I just came in with the same cocky, disgusting arrogance that would just shit on your show to your face. <laughs> like, I just had no, I was like autistically just like doing comedy. Right. Like, <laughs> so I just rolled in. I had no clue what the audition was. I didn't know it was a big deal at all. I was like, oh, they have names on the walls. Like, no clue. Got passed right away. Didn't understand like what it was. So I come pull in and Doc, who's on Bad that. Friends yeah. now, he was the guy that worked in the, well, you remember probably mm -hmm. from when you lived here. Yeah. So he was the only guy that parked back then. And he was like, you can't park here. You have to park somewhere else. And I was like, oh, really? Tommy told me to come park here. And he was like, nope. And I went, I swear I was told to park here. And then I like, he was like, all right, well, you can go in and talk to Tommy. But then, so I go in, I come back out and he goes, oh, you didn't tell me you were paid regular. Like, why didn't you? And I was like, well, I did want this moment, but, but it wasn't, that wasn't why. I just like didn't know what it was. No, I don't. That's good for you. Yeah, don't tell. I feel like it's an asshole movie. Like, hey, I'm a paid regular. That to me sounds more cocky. So it's like, I would well, do you like, know what I see every every three months at the comedy store? I'm sure even when you've gone in, Kalila, you've seen something like this. Carlos has definitely seen this. There's always a comic. They'll get like a new door guy that won't know who the paid regulars are. There's always a paid regular screaming at a new person. Like, <laughs> do you know who I am? And you're like, uh, that's, see, that's the this word. is so dark. This yeah. is so embarrassing because they do not know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They definitely don't. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen lots of screaming into the yeah. into the. I dated a couple of them. <laughs> Wait, Annie. Speaking of car talk, what's up with the Tesla? I have no fucking clue. I had a Tesla. Really? Piece. I gave it back. I order. I ordered it. It's taking so long. I don't want it anymore. Yeah, cancel the order. I was I, gonna get one too, but they didn't pass that eight thousand dollar credit. That's how Indian I am. Uh, I was like, if you ain't give me a month, my money back. Like, uh, I paid an extra eight thousand for it. That's how white and new money I am. <laughs> I was like, Tesla, how much money do you want? I'll give it to you. Nah, I just waited a year or two. You're going to be fine. They're going to up the it's mileage. It's going to be great. So long. It's like the longest I've ever waited for anything in my life. Nah, cancel this one. Get the new model, 2023. Mm. It'll be great. What I know, because it will come out then. Um, LA is I, such a car city. That makes me want less of a nice car. I'm a minivan guy from now on if I move here. You feel mm. like, do, but do you feel like you're cooler because you live in New York. And I, I you yes. can be honest because yes. I've been in both of those areas. Yes. Yeah. I look down on LA. Yeah. I'm, I got to wear a mask still here. I <laughs> feel weird. New York didn't, to New York's credit, and I don't defend New York a lot, but they didn't want to do the mask mandate. The governor of the state passed it, so we had to. But I remember when I went, what was annoying was just you guys, before we had to show our vaccines, you guys had to show yeah, your yeah, vaccines. Yeah. But yeah. now we have to do it everywhere. I'm fine getting vaccinated if I don't have to wear a mask. I don't want to yeah. do both. I wanted, I betrayed my age, I betrayed my Asian roots. I really wanted a <coughs> Toyota Tacoma. Mm -hmm. because she said that Asian Tacoma those Tacoma. are so cool too <laughs> um because I I dive and I have a lot of dive gear I want something I could just throw in the back of the truck yeah um but my stepdad and everyone else were like no you you know you're a grown-up now 
And they fucking, I got an Audi instead. Although when I did drive the Audi, I was like, oh God, the Germans cool. do know how to make it's cars. Fire. Tacoma fire, would be yeah. awesome though. Tacoma I love, would be I awesome. think my next car will be uh, a Tacoma. Get two cars. Does Rudy drive? I, um, she drives Bobby's beat up um, Prius, which is the family heirloom. I, I, I finally accepted the fact that that beat up three, um, what do you call it? Three door Prius that Bobby drives is a family heirloom. Yeah. We can never get rid of that. It's gonna be passed down for generations, I think. I, I think it. you could sell it like to a museum. If that ever becomes a car. Yeah, like museum. petrified wood. Do you know how petrified wood is? I am petrified of money for that. when you make when you approach me in that car. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to get whatever's poisonous. In I had to buy my first car from my dad. Oh, oh I really? Like I think I actually might even propose. That it is the. I think most... I want to be. I think I want to be Indian. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah, kind of parent I think I'm gonna be. I think I might have. This is even worse. I think I might have been like, "Yo, let me give you some money for this because I don't want to just take a car. This seems very spoiled." Uh, he's so responsible. Yeah, we had money for a little bit, and I felt guilty about it, and then we lost it, and I was like, "Why was I feeling so guilty about this money, man? I should have spent that shit up." You know, I. <laughs> if I could go back in time. <laughs> You have a lot more. Than I would sunglasses. love to give you. I would love to give you one of those spots that, that pays. <laughs> that pays, and for the three hundred people. Oh, I wish I could have. It was a great show. I love how you do remember like the the things that hurt you in the very beginning, like when you first start, when like oh, you're a brand new comic. Because if there's anything that Bobby remembers the most, his shit list or his little hate box in his heart. Mm -hmm. It's just everybody from age from 21 on. to 24. When yeah. you were still hateful and angry. For right. me, I yeah. remember like 27, I was like, dude, I can't keep being like this. I no. don't even like who the fuck I am anymore. Yeah. So for 10 years, I worked on not being so angry and being more positive and shit like that. I'm still not where I want to be, but those, yeah, I still hold on to a lot of them shit. No, because like, when you do hold on to them, you're like, am I mad? I'm mad at a, what were you like 23 at that point? Whatever. I would, I like, like if I were mad at you, but I would, well, I, I'm the one that did the wrong, but <laughs> you know, like, I like, I, I was like thinking about, I was mad at this girl from high school. I'm like, I'm mad at a 16 year old girl. Yeah. 100%. Like goodbye. Yeah. You, you're released. You can live your life. Akash, I have a question for you. I have a dilemma and it involves an ex-boyfriend and Annie knows all about ex-boyfriends. Bobby should kill him. Thank you. This is what I think. So I get a, I get a text. Can you imagine Bobby like running at you and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get a hug. Do you know that that's what Bobby does? He thinks he's the brawn of the house. Look at me. I'm five foot eight. I was a, uh, you know, division one swimmer for most of my life. Um, he thinks he's the brawn of the house. So when we hear like noises around the house, he pulls out a fake katana that he got from set. It's I not even a real it. fucking so katana. Because he has to overcompensate. He does. And he wields this thing. He's like, I'm ready, babe. I got him. <laughs> Anyways, it's really sad, but also kind of hot for a fatty. But yes. well, he can't have a gun. Let's be real. But Bobby he's willing to die for you. That's what he's saying. Yes, he first line that of defense, is sweet. which at least buys you time to run. I'm glad he died for my girl. No problem. I ain't probably gonna be able to do much, but I'll be a distraction. <laughs> I just like that Bobby's like coming. He's like, you know what? I'm good at acting. He's like, I'm gonna play a role. He like gets into character. Yeah, he, he really has a good time when we had when there's an intruder. Yeah, a possible intruder. Yeah. This is like favorite time of year. <laughs> but um, I have a. So a couple of weeks ago, I get a text and yeah. it's from an ex and it says, what was the perfume that you used to wear? And I knew exactly what it was because I still wear it. So I'm like, oh, it's, um, you know, um, sense of peace, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, like, do you have a new girlfriend? Like, congrats, whatever. I didn't try to pry into much. He goes, no, I'm buying it for myself. And I, at first I was like, Okay, maybe he's maybe you he's know, gender fluid. Fluid, whatever, that's fine. And perfume can be male, whatever. There's no assigned gender to a scent. But then that's I'm like, is he out it. to kill me? He wants to put on is his he pillow. plotting? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're like a Kardashian. Okay, I've been watching the Big Brother celebrity Big Brother. Lamar Odom's been on it. He's like. Chloe, I, I love, I'm not gonna do black scent. Uh, I will not. Um, but he's like talking about Chloe and he misses her. I mean, that was what, seven years ago? And they're, the guys, they go nuts. Kanye's having the biggest mental break. Something about the Kardashians keeps the, it's like you get, you penetrated their soul like a Kardashian. You are a K name. Mm. Mm, KK. K -K. So he's not over it. No, it's been not. a decade. That's weird. That is, right? That's weird. And it didn't end well then, 
Like he had someone follow me at the end of that relationship. Oh, now that's a problem. He yeah, wants you back. Weird, yeah. He's not gonna hurt. No, no. He wants you. No, I think he wants me dead. Why don't you say his name on the podcast so everybody knows if something happens? This do you think? It. Oh wait, I actually think I know what it is. I'm dead. I think I know what it is. Right yeah, I think what? I know what it is. He wants the perfume because when he skins you and makes a pillow out of you, <laughs> he wants the skin to because the perfume does isn't gonna smell good. Right. It needs to be matched with your pheromones. Yeah. Bond number nine. Sense but of peace. Do your pheromones stay on your skin after you're skinned? I Akash. don't know. <laughs> Dr. Singh? <laughs> Dr. Yeah, no, I Mr. don't think so. Singh, I don't tell- think they would. I think it's just going to be the skin and that's going to rot. But, yo, you should first of all say this guy's name. Second of all, I, you should have been blocked his number. Nah, you you definitely should. You definitely should. I don't really got no exes coming after me. So we'll get No, I don't speak to mine. Yeah. Fuck them. You're gone. Everyone's you moved on. You moved up. Them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everyone's you got the hottest I... guy in comedy. I do. What a <laughs> hottie. <laughs> Esther? <laughs> Esther is such a hottie. Dipsy is an audio app. It's so cool. It's, it's so an good. audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. As a new squirter, guys, I do think I am the authority on getting sexy. And this will help you reach your wettest peak. Here's what I'll say about this. I think we live in a world that's so full of like visual pornography. No knock to them. Mm-hmm. But we're... I'd like to kind of move past that mm-hmm. and to really try and t- tap into the auditory experience. Yes, create your own. Take the words of the author and use your imagination and create the hot throbbing member that is going in and out of you. Each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people like me and Annie and immersive scenarios like Annie and Todd in the shower. I mean, you guys. <laughs> so you feel like you're right there with them. Can we do a dip? Can we have our own dipsy? I'd like to pitch that um, the girls of Trash Tuesday read a dipsy story or create yeah. one. Because I feel like this is right up our alley. This mm-hmm. is. We should be like partners with these people. So you can listen to stories about hooking up with your hometown crush. I love this. This is like the equivalent of dry humping. Dry humping is the best thing ever. Guys, just roll it back. There's too much of the obvious explicit we, visual us- stuff out there. We should feast our ears once in a while. Yes, bring us back to um, uh, a time when we were too young for you to bang us, but now we aren't. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) It's like, let's teeter on that line. Also, I've read erotica, okay? It's you're the pages are sticking together by the end. It's (laughs) you it's too much concentration. You need to just lay back and have the immersive. I'm a big sound person. Someone's voice. I like to imagine. I love the idea of Dipsy because I can just lay back and just rely on my ears for pleasure. Can you imagine if you made a Dipsy and sent it to Esther? We should. How happy she, we should record. <laughs> I it actually think that's a great gift for her. I do think it is. Yeah. That little hornball, that sticky fingered little boy. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Tuesday. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to Dipsy, that's D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash Tuesday. Dipsystories.com slash Tuesday. Oh, my favorite. I Athletic love Greens, you guys. Annie and I cannot get enough of this. this I love how, it. This is how I start my day. I know. Eight ounces of cold water, my little powder. It tastes so good. It's shocking. You're really like, get it, taste it. You will know that we're not messing with you because I just think it's so good. And I didn't, I've been intermittent fasting and I had to come to the show and I didn't get to have mine. And I feel, I feel not as good. I don't feel vegged up yet. I I gotta. Here's what I'll say. Although I am pretty diligent about eating vegetables every day, there just are some days where I'm not able to. I'm on the go. I'm not, or I'm eating out. They don't have vegetables I like. Athletic Greens just eliminates all of the thinking. You're getting your vitamins and minerals and all of your nutrients and all of your the good stuff that you get from vegetables first thing in a day. And you don't have to think about it. They're so good. It comes with, you, you can order the kit where it comes with the own shaker bottle. So you can just shake it right up. It's just so easy. It's so good. I'm so happy that we're sponsored by them and we get to just brag about it because it's really my favorite. So with Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And what I love about Athletic Greens, it's it's keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. 
It also costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than a cold brew. And by the way, if you don't take our word for it, a lot of professional athletes swear by athletic yes. greens. My personal trainer who trains, by the way, she's been out of town for four weeks. I don't know if you can notice, but <laughs> she's on a movie. But she trains like the Marvel stars freaked out when she walked into my house and saw all the athletic greens. And I was like, not only do I have these in my house, but I'm sponsored by them. So I'm telling you, it's it's giving me street cred. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. I'm just so happy to not have, when I take vitamins, I'm burping up. You know when it doesn't get fully down and you have that vitamin burp all day? This, this is the way. This is the future. We're in it right now. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs to your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, yeah, every once in a while I have to talk to my ex when I'm handing him my keys to park my car. <laughs> I go, don't forget you were ever in this car. <laughs> Dating comics is the worst career decision you've made, I think. But I came out of it alive. You did come out of it alive, but you about to get one of these texts. <laughs> did, is that a conscious choice like you have to make like upfront? Like as a guy, I'm not going to date a comic or I, I am open to dating a comic. I always said I'm only going to date Indian girls. So mm. there were no Indian female Suba. comedians I was attracted to. Yeah, you know, that second part is important. <laughs> and I don't think she felt any. I think it's a very like Suba was like, thing. I'm not dating Indians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that- we have a real brother sister thing, but that's for the most part like, nah, it wasn't an issue for me. Why I'm, was it really important for you to want to um, um, marry an Indian because girl? Because I grew up around white people and mm-hmm. I, it like, I'm home, I'm Indian, but then everywhere else it's hard to be proud to be an Indian. And I know the world has changed so much since I was a kid. So it's, this doesn't really necessarily apply anymore. But like when I found my roots and found pride in who I was, my whole life really turned around. Not that mm. I was some, I wouldn't be like a fucking drug, drug addict or whatever. But like, I don't think I'm successful without finding my roots and pride in who I am. And then I was like, yo, the only chance I have, uh, the only reason I was able to do this is because I had two Indian parents. I couldn't run from my identity. And then when I embraced it, I was like, oh, I'm from a beautiful place with a beautiful culture, beautiful faith, everything. So I wanted to marry somebody who shared those roots. Mm. My wife is a different religion than me, but that was something I was always, I wasn't that pressed for, I could marry a Muslim girl or a Sikh girl or whatever, Christian girl even, fine. But then I wanted them to be from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So our kids would have that and we could pass that culture on. That was like a decision to me. And your parents were probably happy. Did they see you kind of like deviating and then coming back? They probably were like so relieved. Yeah, I'm sure they're happy, but they didn't press that a ton mm-hmm. either. My mom just wanted me to be with somebody smart and pretty. Yeah. That's it. That's all she wanted. I don't care what race, smart, pretty. Don't I matter. love that. If you brought some, I'll go home. She was not going to have it. She'd much rather me be with like a uh, beautiful black doctor than like some ugly, mm-hmm. dumb Indian. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) She don't care. My mom was not necessarily, she didn't go for pretty, but she really cared about height because she's one of the few tall Tall Filipinos. And my dad was 6'4". My my sister's six feet tall. So imagine, imagine (laughs) bringing, the first time she met Bobby was at a place called Jin Sushi in Pasadena. Imagine my mom having to look- serving us? Yes. (laughs) Having to look down at my lover, like physically look down. Uh. And he was like, you know, he's portly and he's just so cute. He kind of looks like a piece of sushi. (laughs) That'd be like the roundness of like a piece of fish laying over rice. Yeah. You think Bobby owes a thank you to your mom? Because if you weren't trying to spite her on some level, you know what I mean? You probably wouldn't have looked at this guy twice the first time. I feel like that's such an Asian thing. Like there's always like a physical thing your parents want whether yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty whether it's tall don't fuck up our tall jeans yeah but it's some weird thing that they you know they hold well for indians am- it was arranged marriages like my parents they had a crazy arranged marriage my dad didn't even know he was getting married till the day he got married oh, he found out at cool. another family member's wedding you're <laughs> getting married well, I think I might we gotta like go that. That's, that's bring that back bring yeah. that energy back. It's, I see honestly, the show like that. it works out about the same rate as the love marriages i've seen about yeah. half the indian arranged marriages i see they're happy and about half of them they hate each other can they get divorced or they don't have to now divorced? yeah but back then no yeah mm. but uh for them it was just historically so compatibility based 
And that's the idea. Like, let's just get two people who are compatible. I think that's the idea. Let's get two people who are compatible. Let's make it work. But compatible in what way? Just on the bio data? Yeah, exact just, bio data. Wow. Yeah, you are yeah. Asian. You know the Indian word. matchmaker. Yeah, there you go. Favorite show. My sister-in-law was on that show. My wife was on that show for a second. Rupam with the crazy father? Yes. That's my father-in-law. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, the one that you're watching, you're like, whoa, this guy's, this guy's, this guy's intense. We got to blow that episode up, you guys. Season, what is it on Netflix? Season one, episode eight. Yeah, the show was like a phenomenon. It's such a great show. Oh, I would and love to watch it. And Rupam is the yeah. one that has the daughter. You see her long hair, right? but you don't see her, which was a great choice on my sister's behalf. But yeah, she was on that show. My whole in-laws are on that show. Amazing. Yeah. I love that show. They made it to Netflix before I did. You know how demoralizing that was? <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, dog. But um, yeah. Yeah, but it's like that's such an old school way. It's like you gather someone's, you know, bio data and you hopefully, you know, figure. But there's so many elements you just can't account for. No, like, you can't. But to them, it's like I think they're coming from a place where like, look, we just need to almost like evolutionary shit. Like we're not here really thriving a ton in this country. We might be thriving, but like the general perception is we just need to survive and pass on the genes. Mm. So everything we do is about these kids. So compatibility, genes, having tall kids, let's great, let's do that. I think that's how they look at it. I give them the benefit of the doubt there where it's like, hey, you guys are going to be happy if your kids are happy and healthy and successful. So y'all figure that shit out, whatever it is, just give them the strongest genes possible. Is and it usually people that they know or is it complete strangers? Or is it like someone from town? Or they're like, oh my, my God. My dad used to get married. People from my dad's village would get married from people from my mom's village. It was so like they kind of already village knew. To village yeah. Thing. yeah. There was a connection. Yeah. But I feel like I there's so many like, must have been so many times where someone had a crush and they were like. Yeah, gunning for that person and their parents are like no you gotta go with her like uh, I would happen. scheme to make sure that I was matched with that person eventually yeah, yeah. I would like plant seeds I think if the cast and shit lined right up that standard. happened the, but the cast had to line up I remember yeah. my, one of my cousins in India saying our parents don't care about any of this stuff we just gotta marry somebody from the same cast and I was like bro you done narrowed the fuck out of this shit <laughs> oh, I don't God. know if you know that or not but this yeah. is you eliminated 99% of the world so like, there you go it's our cousins <laughs> yeah. but that's um that's sort of why I sort of grieve a little bit the Filipino mentality because we always want to marry out. Like we're so much self-loathing yeah, and so much I, like, you know, we're, we're very, we were colonized for over 300 mm -hmm, years. So it's mm -hmm. like we live in that colonized mind so much. It's so hard to crawl out of. So the mixed babies are who are revered, the mestizas, yep. like they used to call it like limpieza de sangre, like the cleaning of the blood. Mm. So if wow. we had the mixed with the Filipino, then somehow they would be better. Everything in our media is like skin whitening. Yeah, um, all the actors are not dark skin actors. And it's sort of yep. like this thing that that constant, like I was looked at as better, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, growing up. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, look at those pretty girls. Look. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you another thing? This yeah. is something I thought about as I thought I want to be successful and invariably you will get looked at as a role model. I noticed when I was watching TV, American TV, American film, I never saw a happy Indian couple ever. It was always an Indian is supposed to get an arranged marriage and then falls in love with a non-Indian and then they choose the non-Indian as they should in that case. But like, or an Indian guy that wants to fuck everything on earth, never an Indian girl, but he can't because he's too weird or whatever. Yeah. Or like uh, something in or those. Or an Indian guy who keeps singing the Beatles. Uh yes, <laughs> for sure. And then I'm sure falls in love with a white girl in that movie. You don't see happy Indian couples. And I would see all these like super militant guys that were like, for their people, never marry someone of their people. So it was again, and I, I really do think, you know, my wife and I, God made us for each other. I believe that. But like before that, I was like, I'm going to marry an Indian because I'm not going to perpetuate that shit. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. And then again, luckily, I met this girl that I'm super in love with and she's very in love with me. So it worked. But that was a thing that was like, I was conscious about that. So you're saying I break up with Bobby and find. Well, you can't break up with Bobby. You got to have to have a half. Can you got to have to some... bang Brendan Wardell. Sorry. Oh my God, yes. And it'd still be 50% Filipino. Yeah. Because he's half Filipino. Yep. Am I perpetuating the other side of what you're saying? Because I am going out and telling white girls to date Asian men. <laughs> I'm spreading the word. I'm saying, what have I been doing? You're doing you're doing good because I think that, you know, historically Asian men have been desexualized. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. can't believe it. It's a, we were wrong. We were wrong. Everyone's been wrong. It was the a, dick game it was is a great. Trick. Dude, and also it's like Japanese porn. I don't know if I've always watched Asian porn and I've always thought Asian men were hot because obviously I grew up in Asia. So yeah, coming yeah, to yeah. America. And now we're back to Bukaki. Look at how it always comes full circle. There you go. <laughs> Look, there you go. Is that amazing? Yes. <laughs> That's so, impressive. Good call. 
So coming here and like, you know, no one ever had crushes on the Asian boys. Yeah. And I'm like, you guys are really behind. Yeah. Really behind. No, now I, it's not like that, obviously. The world's changed. Everyone's in love with a fucking character on a K-drama. But yeah. But I, I did have a crush on two Asians throughout my life. But it, you're right. It was like, we, I would go like, wow, I have a crush on an Like I thought it through. Yeah, it was a thing where it was like, wait, a white girl with an Asian guy, like back then growing up, that's just like. I had a friend in college, good looking kid. He kind of was into this white girl. And then I heard she told her friends like, yeah, but I don't know if I could date an Asian guy. And she so had like, they had weird. a vibe. Yeah. But she just wouldn't do it. That sucks. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. kids today are so fucking different that even these things I think are so important. They're like, dude, we don't give a shit about any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're out here. We're not even a gender anymore. If so I was like, like <laughs> if I adopted what you're saying where I was like, listen, I just want to keep my culture specifically what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the only like Quaker, 25% Jewish person is my twin brother. I would have to marry and bang my twin brother. I got no problem with white people who were like, I like being white. But the thing that you don't have to fight with is I'm losing my right. identity. Right. right. That's why to me it was a thing. But again, now nobody cares. So these kids are probably, I'm probably antiquated in my way of thinking. Also, I don't know Bobby, but I love Bobby. You can't yeah. make him Bobby. That's yeah. You can't. won. Yeah. You won. He won't let it happen. Yeah. He's going to chain me down with this <laughs> fake katana. My boyfriend's mom is Laotian, and she's so like, I mean, she was like in, you know, camps and stuff as a kid. Yeah. And like, she just had such a crazy upbringing, and they had to like escape. And her dad, or her dad was like a spy. And so they got sponsored over here. So she's been through all this stuff, and she she doesn't like care about any of this stuff, but she'll like, she cook, she loves like her to cook and, you know, feed everyone and stuff like that. And she'll, I'll go, oh, I love that soup. And she's like, oh, I'll come teach you how to make it. And I'm like, I don't know if you understand. <laughs> if anything's getting cooked in my house, it is by your son. I am never going to be, <laughs> like, whatever thing, cultural thing, it will stop here. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just being very realistic. I will be served. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I do you make more money than him? Yes, I do. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> If you're not gonna make Sorry. money, and you're not gonna cook, I'm gonna be like, yo, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I'm not like, there's no. Like, I do believe that the bread one, or you know, you don't have to. I'm cook. Like, you can cook listen, if you want to, but you don't have I'll, to. Sometimes I go, don't even pay the rent this month. Just cook and clean. That's fine. Sometimes I go, that's a good deal. That's fire. That's a good deal. But is that the rule, Akash? Like, I don't, if, I don't if, believe in gender rules if the man's not making money. He is mm. making money. I'm just making no, no, a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. making a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I told my wife before we got on like our second date, I mm. said, as, as long as this goes, I want you to work as hard as you want, make as much money as you want. I fully support you in anything you want to do. I do want you to know however much money you make, I'm going to kill myself to make more. Yeah. So if in the event that somehow she just creeps above you, is she allowed not to cook that day? Oh, <laughs> oh my then, wife don't have to cook. I well, I don't also don't want to be that thing. I'll help however, but like if I if she was making more than me, I would feel obligated. Like I got to clean up. I got to cook. Right. It's the only way I can feel worth. Also, I'm just competitive. Like I want to make more than my brother, my dad. Like yeah. I'm going to want to make more than you just as a competitor. I know. Isn't but... it fun to just kind of soar yeah, above your family? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Like, uh, it's just like. Uh, you just... need money? Ask me. I'll oh, help my you parents out. are like, yeah, we got it. The toilet exploded or whatever. I go, how much? <laughs> <laughs> Ask the best, dude. It what is. Do Come talk to me. I do best. not. I am well, not I having fun expect, being I, Bank of Kalila. Yeah, because you grew up as a bank. Your mom saw you as a bank your whole childhood. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when she asked you for money, you're like, yo, I did this part of my life. Yeah, I'm retired. I'm yeah. done. I'm done. I'm done taking care of you. My whole childhood. Kalila hides in the ocean from these people coming for her. <laughs> she <laughs> literally is like under. When I don't know where Kalila is, I assume she's well under I, the I, can't surface from, of water. I can't hide from the ocean from Filipinos, though. There's some people. They're water <laughs> right, people. we have the Bajau, and Bajau literally they're, you know what they're fishing for? You. Yes, they <laughs> are. The Filipinos are fishing for it. There's a type of people called the Bajau where they actually have enlarged spleen so they can stay underwater for 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> so they will find me, Annie. That's I love crazy. that. 15 minutes. 15 wow. fucking minutes. I think that they have like some form of like like modified gills or something. So I cannot hide underwater too long. My family will find me. I yeah. have to pay you a compliment. I, the shoes and the shirt being kind of like this off-white. Not the hairy it's legs. It's really good. Oh, let me tell you about these shoes. These are not mine. These are Bobby's. Okay. How much do you think he paid for these shoes? $500. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> really? I know, Bobby. I, know Bobby. I feel Bobby. I live Bobby. There's this thing where you can buy pre-distressed um, chucks. And I don't know how they do it, but it's from Italy. Some guy just wears it out for a couple of years and then they resell them. Uh... Yeah, so that's what Bobby is into. and I've heard of you wearing them and selling them for a lot of money, but I haven't heard <laughs> of a guy. And... What a racket, right? 
This is wait great. the feet picks or the distressed the distressed feet picks I get I've never bought them but I I like a good foot so I get oh, it. Okay. Wait, you are you are yeah a... my wife got descending toe length and I noticed that when we first met <laughs> okay, and if it wasn't for that I don't know if I had the heart to ask for her number but when I saw that in an Indian girl I was like I have to you wait, like a, you like when the toe goes a little the bit. descending order second so toe longer that's me I don't second want toe longer is a is is a um a deal breaker, breaker. so ru- thank you. You said it. You know what I mean? Thank uh, God. Do, Annie, do we have descending toe length? What is it? My I think my, is, my wiki feet rating is pretty good. My toe descends, but it's not. Mine's, mine, mine are fine. My wiki feet is. Does Did you well. say bookie feet? Yeah, my bookie feet. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, you can get, get a thousand dollar bonus. Over under on my to- whether my toes are ascending or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, 100%. that's good to know. Yeah. Now I'm gonna chop off my second toe. No, just shave no. If you off got a good wiki foot, these people know. Also, they're the experts. Yes, and here's the I'm other just thing. a guy with one preference. You know, some people. Yes, it's all different because I'm always like, I always ask audience members. I'm like, are you like a this guy or a, like trying to get fucked through the toes? Because a lot of you know what I mean. They <laughs> oh want yeah, to, this. Like, like a yeah, foot. Yeah, so yeah. then they're looking more at arches and soles of yeah, the feet. Okay. But if you're if you're between the toe, you're probably looking for like a. A larger gap. Michael know. Blaustein is like bigger in the feet than me. That guy's really. All about feet. Should we have him fun. on? I have yeah. so many questions. Yeah, yes. yeah, one hundred percent. He'll come on. Episode. He'll answer all your foot questions. <laughs> He's got a whole podcast that's basically just fit, foot really? talk at the end of the day. Oh, I love yeah, that. Stiff socks. You know what I mean? It's in that's the title. What say. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wow. And so I, what I, my knowledge of foot fetishes are that it's like the foot part and the genital part of your brain are really close. Mm. And sometimes they kind of just like. Nah, that makes cross. sense. That adds up. So like, like you just foot. get like a sexual But I'm not at that guy. I mean, look, I got friends. More. Andrew's really into feet, notices arches, all that stuff. Me, I notice the toes. <laughs> I'm a toe guy. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? But Blau, he's fucking, bro. He's what all about, about feet porn and everything. I have I a question for you. You guys do it. It's not like objectifying. It's like, it's almost like you're like giving like you know the way, uh, positive you attention. Know what, you know the way the it. judge looks at a Westminster dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me with feet. It's like I'm objectively like that's a good foot. That's a bad foot. That can't get a trophy. That's I have a all. question for you. <laughs> How so let's say, <laughs> let's suppose it's perfect dimensions, mm-hmm. um, descending toes. Yeah. Can't go toe I'm in. I'm listening. Okay. Are you looking at it for potential or for what it is? For instance, if you have all of the right measurements, but she current she just ran a marathon and she has a couple corns and a couple blisters on there, are you looking at what it could be or what it is? I think I'm probably what it is. Yeah. Probably what it is. Because you don't want to think past like a surgery. Yeah. No, it's yeah, not yeah, surgery. Yeah. She just I don't know ran about a corns, marathon. But she corns just go away. She nails, toenails. Mm. 26 <laughs> miles, guys. <laughs> Now we know she's talking about Bobby's feet. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got that motherfucker to get a pedicure. I want to get tired. And he got bright orange as a color. Oh, that's funny. That's a Bobby move. Caution. Yeah. Again, I don't know. I never met Bobby. Before I know about him, that's a Bobby move. It's like caution under construction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I he- I heard from Brandon Wardell that guys who paint their fingernails and toenails are queer baiting. Really, mm-hmm. but now it's in the like in the zeitgeist to queer bait. It's like queer baiting is like now what. Is right. like That's popular. trying to get dudes to fuck you is queer baiting. Well, no, it's, that, it's pretending we used to use that you're term gay. In a very different way when I was pretending you're gay to get a girl. Kind of. Oh, being a little yeah. Remember that fool's so Russian in a predator movie way. with um, Matthew Perry. Uh, Matthew, and Matthew Perry. Perry. Yeah. I didn't know he pretended to be gay. I think that's what it. The, yeah. maybe no, it's it a different one with Matthew Perry. I know which one you're talking yeah. about. Had Nev Campbell. I know my rom coms, dude. Oh, Wait, Nev. I want to ask you about rom coms. Love them. Okay, are there? rom-coms that you think are specifically geared for men like what are some male rom-coms because i was trying knocked to look up. knocked up knocked up is a comedy do you think it's more it's, it's calm but that's like for what boys. about hitch hitch is probably for dudes that was for my dudes, wife right? loves it i love it but hitch is probably for dudes. that's actually okay hitch has played a really big role in my relationship because todd always says he does 90 and i do 10 and that's from the kiss but that's yeah. just like how we operate yeah. our lives yeah I, I watched it the other day and while certain things are a little bit like cringe now i think it's still it's still okay what's cringe about it certain th- just certain things that he says like along the way we're just like all right that doesn't quite like hold up as you know yeah. as the years have passed but what are other male rom-coms like i i cannot watch a single rom-com with bobby well, hold on. Adam oh, Sandler yeah. movies? Are those rom-coms? Oh, yeah. Like Wedding Singer days. is probably a male rom-com. Forgetting Sir Marshall. Forgetting oh, yes. Sir Marshall was so good. Yeah, that movie I thought dragged a bit, but yeah. I really? love you, man. Which parts? I Love You, Man is a bromance movie specifically. Yeah, that That's a fire movie. 
Okay. That's my whole life is I love Ooh, you. Ooh, Just man. Friends. That one's just a sleeper. Just Friends is the number one, is actually the number one, one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Same. I thought it just, just recently when saw. Harry Met Sally, but not as good. It we did have laughs. It's rewatch it. Have you watched it recently? Uh, I watched it over Christmas. No. I just watched, we just, it's, it's, I, I laughed the entire time. I couldn't believe it. And Everyone plays such Chris, a character. I'm also a Justin Timberlake hater. Just, I just, he in it? he's not. Him. Oh, no, no you're this one, of, that one is bad. Friends just of Benefits. Friends. That's what, what a are you bad one. Of? Just Friends is with uh, Amy, Amy Smart, Smart and uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Okay, I've and heard Chris of this. I've heard Klein. this is very funny. Chris Klein, is that his name? No, Chris I heard Klein's this is super it. funny. Um, Anna Ferris is hilarious and it's so funny. Okay, no, I've heard this is funny. I actually need to rewatch. <laughs> I need to watch this. But Chris Klein is so funny. Yeah, he was great. I mean, that was so good. I mean, I would say that I've really very rarely seen Ryan Reynolds not be. The guy's fantastic. I mean, dude. unbelievable. He's hot. He's funny. Yeah. What don't he have? He's so fucking hilarious. Akash, um, we do on the show um, midway through or when we're having feelings. So we take a banana break. Love bananas. Me too. I overlooked them for years. They're and I'm so back good. In. That's, so I mean, that you got to take that part off. That's crazy. It's moldy. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's wild. Right? I've never seen a banana look there. like that. I've never seen a banana look like this in my life. <laughs> I'm oh eating around God, it. Oh my God, this is like... That's Bobby's penis tip. <laughs> <laughs> Looks just like that. Why does he have a carcinogen on it? That's bad. He has like Neapolitan ice cream colored dick. He really has... He's tri-colored. Really? Mm -hmm. Depending on how the light hits it, could be four colors. Todd's is all Jack because he had like a thing when he was circum. He told me this like first date. I guess he just likes to let you know his penis is gonna have a thing mm -hmm. going yeah, you on. Gotta. Yeah, you got it. You open with it, yeah. but he um, it was like when he got circumcised, there was like they didn't fully circumcise it. Mm -hmm. So then when he was like fourteen, he had to go in because his dick was like attached mm -hmm. still. The head holy was so attached. shit, and that hurts when you get a big boner. He would have had to like. Like he must have had to like get like a Q-tip to clean in between that little. He yeah. pretty much had a Prince Albert. Yeah, got to put a ring through. It so probably. I come Brutal. from a culture where if you're not circumcised, you're um humil like you're teased your whole upbringing, right? Yeah. They call you pistot. And so <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uncircumcised, but it's like you're lesser of a human. Uh, it's really mean. It's not true, guys. Um, because I am fine with an uncut yeah, I don't cut. Know. Don't care. Um, but my the guy that I dated for a while, my Possibly brother. I'm a brother fucker, Akash. <laughs> we don't know if he's really my brother, but I fucked him anyways. But um, he didn't get Can circumcised. We see a of this guy? Yeah. I want to oh, see if it was worth it. We do look alike. It's scary. I want to see if he's hot, though. Is it worth it? Yeah. You know, it was? Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair Who enough. had bigger shoulders? I support him. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But this guy, when he would get boners, he would be in a lot of pain. Because his skin couldn't, you know, they cut off too much. Ah, so the there base was, was real was tight. Like, yeah. And I felt so bad for him. So I would get him horny, but not too horny. There was like a, a nice fine sister. line. Yeah. I, I want to apologize to my brothers. <laughs> I'm such I a thought I was a good sister. I did nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I never touched your dicks at all. <laughs> Yo, having hot sisters rough, dude. You got to <laughs> worry about everybody else fucking this girl. You can't. That's not, that's not fair. Yeah. What an existence. Do you know who Asa Akira is, the porn star? The name I've heard. Okay. Oh, this is a good boy, good married she, she boy. Is, um, oh. She is a goddess, a brilliant okay. woman. She always says, like, without a doubt, like, if I had a brother and he was good looking, absolutely I would have fucked him. She has, uh, she dreams about not being an only child. Oh. Like, so she could fuck her brother? Yeah, I like maybe girl, she had dude. a maybe like she had about. a twin and she fucked him into her body. <laughs> oh, absorbed you know, him like yeah. an angler she fish. She absorbed his dick. <laughs> <laughs> and now she just has an extra appendage. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do a joke saying that I my twin brother and I were born Siamese. His that my head was right by his dick. <laughs> That'd be so funny. They had to remove my mouth from over his dick. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a twin brother for real? <laughs> That's my dream is a twin boy and girl. Well, genetic, yeah. you can do it with IVF. I know. So weird. I know. I, 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 with the, you have to pay for your dream babies, okay? I feel like some, some like, you might be, I don't know, you're playing too much. Yes, no, I think the Lord will punish thee. Yes, I, that's, I feel like <laughs> yes. God will punish you. Yeah, yeah, I know. It is it. like, it's taking some things in your own hand. But then I think about it on the other end. If this technology was created, it was created under the under rule God's of watch, God's I mean? watch or yeah. whatever. So it's like, whether you're religious or whatever you're looking at it as, it is like, are we being idiots for not taking the technology that has naturally mm. 
Yeah, Time that's to... a good thought. I I want twin boy and girl, but I, again, I do fear it. Like I don't know. Some, you're doing too some, much. You're just so lucky to get a kid. They will. They will. Happy, come. healthy. Thank you, Akash. Thank for you guys doing so much. This. You've been it. wonderful. Thank you. Um, we hope you come back, and we hope Gladly. you. You have a special coming out. I have a special that's out on YouTube called "Bring Back Apu." Check it out. Hell yeah. It's one, one million views in one week. So it's Hell probably yeah. Million as quickly as we can. And that is, a, is that a direct attack at Hari Kondabalu? No, it's mm -hmm. a direct attack at the mentality that like we're victims. Yeah. I don't like that shit. No, we're not. That's awesome. We're here. We're privileged. Let's be great. And will you do my show at Red Star Bar in Green? <laughs> yes. In yes. In 2000, <laughs> uh, what year was that? 16, 14? Whatever it was. 2012, 13? probably. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out Akash and all the stuff he's doing. And thank you so much. Thank you guys. Here. Appreciate Subscribe, it. Subscribe, like. We're trying to get to 200,000 subscribers this week. See you guys. Bye.